I think she's staying with us now. Some of the challenges of auto trading in Nigeria is most car owners in Nigeria are unable to access loans to buy cars and are forced to pay in full. Car owners rely on fragmented ecosystem to keep their cars in shape, which often leads to bad outcome. Thirdly, there is no science right, to car pricing in the market, and this has a negative ripple effect throughout the industry. Standards on car conditions and grading are also disjointed, leading to stakeholder confusion, to mention a few. Now, how can we facilitate seamless auto trading in Nigeria, given our transportation need is still heavily dependent on cars? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 So before I bring in our guest, like in a minute. So Jennifer, if you were given an option to um, own your car, you know, would you take up, uh, based on your salary, sal salary structure, would you take up that financing yeah. if you're given that? Why? It's too expensive. Okay, it's expensive. It's expensive okay. to maintain and all of that. I don't think so. You don't I think, think it's you... too much of a burden at the moment. For you? Yes. All right. So if you were given a very good deal, you still would not take it? It depends on the deal. It depends on what you mean by very good deal. <laughs> I'm toasting you right now. It depends on what you mean right. by very good deal. But, but, but Issa, you have a car. You know, would you would you like to trade in your car? You know, to get something different, absolutely, something more modern. Absolutely. So, yeah, so what would be the condition? So long as the interest rate isn't high, that's number one. Mm. That's is very important, and I don't have to pay immediately. Mm. I have to pay instrumentally, mm. and the interest rate isn't high. Okay, let me hear from Mori. Mori, you said you don't. You've not. <laughs> You're not even interested in anything loan. So if somebody g is offering you to say, Mori, come and take a, a brand new model of your car, would you, would you not I, I take that offer? I don't think that I would take the offer because personally, I even think, I think that cars that are, are a liability. I'm hoping that our guest today will maybe, you know, do some clarification on that. I think no. that you should get a car based on maybe yeah, your no, lifestyle. No. You know, I do like all my contents from home. Mm. Um, I should like everything from, I honestly don't really need a car when I can just, you know, Uber to where I'm going to. It's faster, it's quick, I don't have to go for servicing, I don't have to bother about fuel, fuel price is high. You know, I don't have to do, like, you, mechanics in Lagos run people crazy. I don't have to do all of that. You know, so I'm listening to like cars are a liability. If you don't really, 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 really need them, don't mm. get a car. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Get an expensive car for no matter. Okay. Don't get a Benz. <laughs> <laughs> My G Wagon is coming. Mayo cool for the <laughs> It's the VP commercial of AutoCheck, an automobile, uh, automotive um, technology company established to build digital solutions targeted at enhancing and enabling automotive commerce across Africa. Prior to her current role, Mayo Kun served at Cars 45 in the same capacity and at OLX Nigeria as head of business development and strategy. Her area of expertise include um, project management, business intelligence, e-commerce, and marketing. And she's joined us live in studio. Thank you so much with her beautiful hair. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Mayoko, you were just Mayoko. laughing. Oh, sorry, Mayoko. Why is that? Okay, is that singer that is in my head? Mayoko, sorry, darling. So, so, so um, you know, you, you heard, I mean, this is like a sample of what the average Nigerian thinks, you know, yeah, when it comes precisely. to car trading and all of that. So what do you make of all the, the comments, you know, Maury saying, no, 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 she doesn't need it, Just, you know. So, what do I you mean, think? I, can, I can understand. That, yeah. that's, the, that's the reality. A lot of people have, are wary of financing. A lot of people are wary about mechanics, mm -hmm. like Maury said, yeah. right? But the beautiful thing about AutoCheck is we're a 360 degree automotive solution. A one stop shop. A one stop shop, exactly. You can do everything on our platform. So, what we have done is we've been able to get dealers come list your car on the platform. Mm -hmm. For you as a customer, what, you're imp what is important to you is I need to know this car that I'm buying. What's the condition? So, we've brought that in standardization, inspection of the cars. Mm -hmm. Finance partners also come on our platform. You can look at our customers. So a customer can apply for a loan right from the platform. And in terms of interest rates, it's also very market friendly, right? What so it's based on the market. market friendly? And it's a marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. And what we have done is we have brought in a lot of different finance partners. So mm -hmm. if you apply for a loan, you would actually be considered by a number of different partners. You get a number of offers, and then you make your decision based on which is the on best one for you. For you. Mm -hmm. From tenure, interest rate, and as you're financing your car, 
it also comes with annual maintenance contract, mm. right? So that ensures that throughout the course of that loan, your car is being serviced. And it's also being serviced by workshop technicians in Authorized. the auto check, exactly, in the auto check ecosystem. Yeah. So we're ensuring that we're protecting you from the fact that you finance that car. We're protecting you with maintenance so that you can make that decision from an informed perspective. Mm. And so we can actually address some of these fears <laughs> that I've heard today. Mm. What are the terms and conditions? <laughs> we get there are always terms and conditions. That one, you have, to, you have to read it. But the truth is, um, there are a lot of young people out there, and it seems like all the time when it comes to issues of purchase in Nigeria, and this is not only linked to cars, everything is like you almost need, literally need to carry full, complete money to go and buy, exactly. you know. Even starting with your rent, you have to pay. Some landlords will insist two years up front. You know, you know, it's not like abroad where you are able to just walk in, pick a dealership, and you're paying monthly immediately. Yes. You know, so what solutions are you guys bringing to the table? Because young people are just starting a job, and maybe they've just been working for a year. They've been able to save a little, you know, and all of that. Can this truly be a solution? Because we are still a very car dependent. Mm -hmm. Um, country. I mean, we are not anywhere near the public transportation system where it's working effectively, where I can say, okay, you know what, I can just do without a car. We're still very car dependent. Yeah, so owning a car is one of the most important things that you would have. And it's not just from a status perspective, it's necessary, mm -hmm. right? And like you said, if you're a young person, you're just building yourself up in your career, why can't you enjoy something similar in the Western world, where I just walk into a dealership and get a loan. So our financing penetration is very low in this country, and that's what we're trying to solve. Mm. And your loan application is dependent on your financial profile, mm. your bank statement, what income are you getting? And based on that, you can see different cars that you're applying for. So she talked about a Mercedes. If you qualify for a Mercedes, why not, why not? <laughs> right? So, so people finance Toyota Corollas, Toyota Camrys, RAV4s, G-Wagons, Mercedes. It just depends on you, and your, your profile, and what you can afford. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about... Uh, okay. She wants yeah, to she was okay. Yeah. Okay, so I want to understand how your, um, your loan works. I want to understand how the payment works. Are you saying that um, will I have to make like an initial payment a down payment first before um, you start debiting me monthly, or I come to you, fill the paperwork, and, and then you give me a card, yeah. and then you take the money monthly. So let me clarify something. Right, you're not filling paperwork, which is what's so beautiful. You can do everything right on your app. Right, so you download the AutoCheck app, you apply for financing right there, fill in your personal details, employment details, and you can get an offer within one day from our financial partners. And that's even like max. You can get an offer within hours. And then to your question around what, what am I paying? So yes, you're required to pay 30% uh, equity, equity payment, right, based on the value of the car. And then you can spread the payment. Finance partners give loans that it could either be for 12 months or 24 months. So you can either that's spread it for a year yeah, or 24 months. So it doesn't so, go up to four years like the banks, you see. Okay, so and I come to Mari. Let's, let's look at um, the aspect of uh, fraud. Mm -hmm. So have you had cases of individuals or in, um, engaging in fraud, fraudulent activities on your site, and as well, how do you manage it when you have something like that? So we have. A, so we are like an independent uh, stakeholder that's that's bringing everyone together, and that's one of the things we actually offer that our financial partners trust us for because they know that these cars have been inspected. Also, the valuation is very important. So rather than a customer going to get a false valuation, because so many cars have been listed on the platform. So that way, because we also have pricing data from the variety of dealers, so we know that that car that you are actually financing is worth that exact amount, right? right? And such that if the finance partner is making you an offer, they can trust that that value is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, banks, finance partners, their core is not automotives, right? So really, we are, they don't have to start doing that, trying to figure out what's the value of this car, mm -hmm. how does this car depreciate over time, yeah. what's the value of this car after a year. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that we have built into our algorithm, okay. such that the partner can be confident in the fact that this car that I am financing, this is what it costs. In a year, this is what it's going to be. And so I can trust that I am giving this 
asset to this person, and I wouldn't have any okay, issues. Let me call um, on Mori, sorry there. Yeah. <laughs> Mori. Okay, so um, I have two questions. One of, one of my questions is kind of sim similar to what EC asked. Um, so I need to know if, if, if say that I want to come to your organization, do I need to have like a guarantor or somebody who's going to stand in for me or, you know, stuff like that. And then the second question, you were talking about profiling, you know, so if, 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 if I come and say that I want a Mercedes, for instance, let's, since we're using Mercedes today, if I come and say that I want a Benz, for instance, what, what makes me qualify as somebody who is, you know, whose profile is in, in line with somebody that can afford a, a, a Benz? Okay, so to answer your first question, there's no, uh, you don't need a guarantor, you don't need someone to stand in for you. The application is based on you as an individual, your profile, your financial history, your earnings over time. So that's what determines uh, your application and your approval. In terms of the value of the car, of Mercedes, like you said, what's very important is you as an individual, can you afford that car? right, regardless of brand. So that's what we're looking okay. at. And that's what the okay. financial okay. partners also look at. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you a little short. No so problem. you know, you were, you were giving like examples of how, you know, in the Western world, if you want a car, you can just go for it. Most of the time, there are a lot of people who can afford like a Benz or a Tesla and, and they, they, they're like taking loans or, you know, going entering into dealerships rather, and then they can just get these cars. So then you said something again about how you have to be able to afford the car. So I'm kind of like confused. So when I say afford the car, what I mean is one, you can pay your equity contribution of 30%. And then two, the okay. finance partners would also look at your financial history. We have that okay. way they can look at your bank statements. What are your, um, Inflow, what has been your inflow over time? So they themselves can make that decision to say, okay, will this person be able to confidently pay that monthly payment? Remember as well, if you want to finance a 10 million naira car, right? What's important is not that can you pay that 10 million right now, but can you pay it over the course of two years? So that's exactly what they are looking at. Hmm. What if there is, uh, there have been cases of individuals who are able to afford that um, 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 facility but in the cause of the facility they lost their jobs mm -hmm. so what do you do <laughs> so what do you do in that aspect yeah so i mean uh, we don't sort of we don't pray for job okay. loss <laughs> right we don't pray for job loss but one of the things that we also offer is uh, a recovery service so if you are not able to <laughs> make, and this is for the financial partners right because we also have to protect them as they have given you uh, these loans to make sure that so if you are not able to make that payment, so we can recover the funds. <laughs> no, but if, you re if you now recover, because I was drive. going to ask about defaults. You know, mm -hmm. so how do you structure defaults? Because I mean, we can't we can't be blind to what happened with COVID. A lot of young Fair people enough, yes. lost, lost their, jobs. their jobs and all of that. So maybe, yes, I was doing well, my income was good and everything, and all of a sudden I lost my job and I'm not able to meet up with that um, the, um, what's it called, my monthly repayment, mm -hmm. right? I'm now defaulting. So when you take over the car from me, you know, do I, am I at a complete loss? You know, if maybe I had done up to like a year, two months, you know, it was just eight months left and mm -hmm. I lost my job. What then happens? To my money that I've deposited with you people, Recovery. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you've been you've been enjoying the car, you've been using the car, oh, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I need you, I need you to um, explain okay. more about recovery. What do you mean by recovery? What does it entail? Mm. Because as a customer, when you say recovery, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? No, 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 no. no. Are you going to take <laughs> the car back? No, so the, the financial yes. partners can also work with you, mm. right? Because, like you said, there are extreme circumstances. COVID happened. No one could have predicted that yeah, but it, what I say recovery I actually say it from the perspective of there's some people that you know would get a loan and just would be badly behaved mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. what I yeah. mean right and okay. so that is we also then have to protect against that bad behavior not in cases where there are extingent circumstances such as COVID it affected the whole world mm -hmm. I mean right and so in some cases their financial partners can then work with you based but you still it's an obligation Totally. that you have to make.
Okay, <laughs> but so you have to meet. <laughs> we are going to take a break because we're already getting some questions. Um, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 